why it's just me taking is when we uh, show it as a demonstrative evidence and when we when these are the evidences that are presented in the court as an exhibit but they have to be uh, so they have to be supplemented by the testimonials so these are the uh, physical evidences that what we are talking about and that is the terms that are being used as measurements in the upcoming act so why the basic thing that we were was like what is the need for identification with these measurements with these physical evidences we can establish a, a person of interest we can establish whether it's his first crime or he has done uh, he is a repeat offender or if that database is there with us we have taken those fingerprints because he was ordered to give security uh, we can establish if he commits any future crime or if he just uh, runs away and we have to sees him so there we can use those measurements thirdly when we if there is a database and we we have uh, fingerprints that's it we don't know who does it belong to but when those fingerprints they are found at a crime scene over successive crime scenes we can establish the identity of a person being belonging to a single entity and if one crime is solved because of that identity we can solve the rest of the crimes other than that uh, identification if we it can form the basis those measurements can form the basis of anthropological interest if we go through criminological uh, theories some people they have come with theories as to criminological theories as to if there are anthropological characters where we can establish that what kind of uh, criminals uh, if they have a typical skull structure or they have certain anthropological characteristics where we can say ki okay this they might have this criminal tendencies uh the techniques that uh, the because this identification process is not something new it has been uh, it has uh, improved over the years over the centuries i can say earlier the main purpose of identification was not uh, these four folds it was just to see if a person has committed a previous crime because that's how the quantum of punishment was uh, decided if a person has committed a crime before this is a second crime he will be given a uh, as a much severe punishment if it's a if he's a repeat offender he'll be punished harder so this kind of uh, techniques earlier it was just for the identification of those criminals they were either with the facial recognitions or more permanent things like branding so these i'll just go through it uh, these brand, uh, brandings was something where with the, uh, they used to brand the skin of a criminal with hot iron so that next time when they see they know that this person had been convicted for a previous crime similar thing that was done was tattooing now these tattooing it was commonly seen uh, it was done in japan in uh, some 10 10000 bc what they did was they did this tattooing over either the arm or even the forehead so such branding and tattooing it became uh, like a social taboo and these people they were not Uh, getting employment because of those branding and tattooing or even they were left out as uh, outcasts now next technique that was uh, in vogue was memorization now before 18th century the cities were the, the their cities or i should say towns were small people knew each other so if there were crimes they knew who to catch because it was like a small community but with advent of uh, industrialization and people coming into towns and making them big huge cities it became difficult but this person eugene francois he was someone uh, with a technique he came up with a technique where he studied 30000 criminals he used to go to the jails he used to observe them and collected information just by observing them and he made a detailed account of those so he is uh, was said to be the first private detective in the paris police and he made a plain police uh, he created a whole unit for that where they will be observing those prisoners 
and collecting their data. Eventually, uh, because it became difficult to remember, so what they did was they started making written documents. Now, this kind of documents, it was a description of those uh, criminal description dockets, wherein they had uh, everything jotted down to the name, and they used to uh, check for uh, scars, old tattoos, and anything peculiar like hair color, and they used to document all those just as an uh, identification process. Ultimately, photography came in the first half of the 18th century, and it was kind of a bone because they, now they don't have to write everything. They can simply take photographs and that can be used. Now, these are the mugshots that were taken in the 18th century. As you can see in the first picture, they are, because they, were, uh, they had this, we have to take a profile picture because they couldn't take two. So what they did was they kept a mirror in between where they can see a profile picture and a front picture together. Eventually, the present, uh, the second picture, uh, that is the mark shots that were developed. And the very person who helped uh, systematize it is shown in that very picture, that is a Bertelin. Now, this Bertelin system, we all know about it. We have taught about anthropometry and everything. We know that he took, used to take 11 uh, measurements. And this all, and these measurements and these system of him, it was based on the fact that no two people can, uh, pe uh, people having the same measurements and that to 11 same measurements is pretty less. So what they did was they made, they made this chart and they uh, noted down every other measurement and then they uh, coded them. And eventually when they, when the case came and they had to, uh, for identification, they checked for those measurements, the smallest ones. And when they have like, uh, then they narrowed it down. Let's say it came down to be four to five people. After that, the facial recognition was done on the basis of the, uh, on the basis of the witnesses that were there and that's how they identified. And, but because of the system, it was very much reduced to a smaller sum. Ultimately, this is what developed. This is a Bertillion card collection, which was made uh, during that. And it was a pretty uh, system, which was very much in way in uh, all over Europe and uh, just before the advent of the fingerprinting. So as you can see that we, uh, the basic prelims are there, then marks and uh, scars, they were noted down in very much detail, whatever they found, they used to write them. On that top right corner, we have those measurements. And then they eventually, with the advent of the photography, those photographs were even added. Now, like I said, in the mark shot picture, because of uh, Bertalan himself, he was interested that he thought he, the ears are something unique and they might be used in future. So that's when he suggested that a profile picture should also be taken. And it was his idea that now we have this kind of mark shots wherein we have a front uh, profile and one front picture and the profile picture. With these photographs, eventually uh, then uh, fingerprinting came into being and we know it, how it came on. And then eventually we had the Galton system wherein he characterized them into three. And these uh, fingerprints were made a part of that identification docket wherein with the photographs, these were put. And even when they were displayed for as a wanted poster, they were a part of it. When everything was jotted down, this is that of a 1934 wanted poster, wherein fingerprints and the description is very much visible. Now, uh, after that, we came into it. Uh, better means, and then we knew about the uniqueness of those prints. So we had ear prints, palm prints, foot lip, and palatoscopy, and then we had the biometrics. We all know about this, so I need not go into detail. And eventually, the present generation that we have, we have uh, much better techniques. And I think in India, we'll be uh, moving on to pretty fast on those techniques, because this is what I found in an article which was there which was written uh, by an Indian only. So I think we'll be seeing all those very uh, soon in India also. So coming on to the art, now whatever was happening till now in the world, those systems, those measurements, they were taken, but there was some, they, uh, those systems, those measurements, they cannot be taken until unless there was a law for it. So. Earlier, when the they were when the criminals were 
uh, arrested and they were taken into custody those measurements were taken but because then they started uh, when they started refusing to give those measurements because they know that how they turned out to be what are their future purposes so for uh, for the easeability and the, for the feasibility that they can be take those measurements can be taken lawfully these acts were uh, put into place and that uh, measurements the uh, documentation of those measurements was made legalized so in india just before just uh, one month after the uh, 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 movements that started with the mahatma gandhi's so called asayog andolan so what non cooperation movement that's when the british colonials they came into with this act wherein uh, they legalized or they authorized for these measurements to be taken along with the photographs of the convicts and the uh, others so that whenever whenever those people they used to uh, voluntarily get arrested and fill prisons they when these measurements were taken and these photographs were taken it was used as a means to discourage them or uh, create fear into them so that act that was uh, enacted in the year 1920 it had nine sections and over the years that is 102 years uh, various state amendments have come into being and even uh, we have few state rules as we know that for the uh, enforcement of the act we need state uh, rules for that and because the uh, power to make those rules for this very act was given to the states so it was the states who made and i could found a few of them uh, related to it now this act that was made in 1920 what happened after 102 years that we needed amendments now as such amendments were needed because we know that the because as we have seen the techniques have evolved criminals have evolved the techniques of uh, pre, uh, committing those crimes have evolved so even the counter forensics have to be involved and because it is not possible if we don't have those if we have those physical evidence but if we cannot compare them with those personal uh, uniqueness of the which which can be which we can get from those measurements that we take from those criminals we needed that uh, you can say authorization legal authorization that we can take those samples and we can compare with the physical evidences that we get and because of that lack in between because of that junction in between uh, the conviction rates was not high so uh, conviction rates were not much so because of that we came to this very act and as we uh, we can see that it was a very small time being that it started in uh, it was introduced in on 28th and it was one uh, passed and it was given the consent by 18th april and it repealed so as before in terms of going individually what this act i'll just go through the differences that happened so what this act did it uh, increased the type of data earlier it was for the fingerprints and footprints that were taken along with the photographs but with this very act even the physical and the biological samples they can be taken behavior like uh, the uh, signatures and the handwriting those samples can be taken and like uh, what we have in 53 and 53 a crpc that the biological samples they can also be taken from the convict uh, convicted persons from the arrested per persons these what are the ones which were there in the earlier act also but there the punishment was like one year but currently the un try that is there for this very act is because of this uh, thing that these samples irrespective of the crime they have committed it can be taken from in uh, convicted persons arrested persons and they can be uh, they can be subjected to give all those all those uh, measurements as they are said all those samples irrespective of the crime they have committed irrespective of the need for those samples to justify or to say use them as physical evidences irrespective of everything you just have to give that data and just to create a data bank which may or may not be used for that very crime that they have committed and refusal to give such samples is also punishable under 186 ipc and that is the whole thing is all about that why do we need why this act is said to be that draconian ncrb has been made uh, the center where all this data will be stored and that took for 75 years and it will only be removed once they have been acquitted so because of all this 
the it is said to because these temples are uh, taken from anybody if you just if you are walking on the uh, wrong side or if you are just jay walking or if you are uh, you are just crossing any law be it uh, rash and negligent driving or anything you will be asked to give your biological samples your dna profiles will be created for it and that is said to be a, a breach in the right of right to privacy uh, a, a lot of fundamental rights be it is incrimination equality just because it is not anywhere linked to the crime that has been committed is just for the sake of collection of those data for that data bank so it is said that it will create a state of mass surveillance and that's how it will be a problem now because of shortage i will not be able to discuss each and every section i had made a uh, ultimately all i have to say is that uh, irrespective of the crime that has been committed samples will be taken and if you refuse you will be charged with 186 ipc and again because you have been charged with that you have to give your samples so either way samples will be taken and even a head constable can ask for those samples and you cannot refuse it and for the biological only thing is ki if a crime is committed against a woman or a child or if the crime is where the punishment is more than 7 years biological samples have to be taken so if a person steals a purse of a female she'll have to give uh, that uh, thief will have to give a sample biological sample for stealing that purse but if that purse is stolen from a man he need not give those biology so it's like there's no uh, basis for the sample collection which itself is uh, against very famous judgments of the supreme court and that's why currently it has been challenged in high court and it's uh, the hearing is due in november and finally as a medical practitioner where we have to take those biological samples eventually if every other case comes to you because they have uh, arrested or if they have detained any person the medical practitioners who are examining those people they have to take biological samples and they have to uh, create infrastructure manpower to deal with those increased number of cases and maintain the quality also and to ensure chain of custody so it will be a hot ordeal and that is what we have to think about these are the references thank you